Hey guys, it's Mashley. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time. And if it's your first time, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Okay, I know I said I wasn't gonna turn the channel into a makeup channel, so don't clock me if you saw the last one. But I just had to come up with this look for you guys. I've been binge watching the Kardashians and I keep seeing this look, keep seeing this look. I felt inspired and I thought, why not? So for this video, as the title has already given it away, we will be creating a Kardashian inspired soft glam look. This was the result. So if you guys wanna learn how to do this at home, definitely keep on watching. And I don't know y'all, I go back and forth on whether I love them or I can't stand them. But one thing I can say for sure is watching the show, I really, really enjoy the fashion looks, the makeup, the business aspect, the whole bit. Um, and as I was watching today, I kept noticing like, um, both Kim and Kylie kind of have like their standard soft glam makeup look that they seem to kind of go to and I really enjoy that. I love Kylie's blush placement and I really love Kim's like smoky neutral shadow with like the thinnest liner. So that's what we're going to be going for today. I actually don't own very much of like the Kardashian family like makeup lines. I don't really have much for Kylie Cosmetics and I have a few things from KKW Beauty but there are a few more that I'm looking to get. So for the video, I'm just gonna use what I have. Most of it's gonna be from the drugstore. So if you guys watched my last makeup tutorial, the fall sunset look, I'll link it for you guys above here just in case. But in that video, I pretty much mentioned how I'm mostly on the drugstore side when it comes to makeup. So we will go ahead and get started. I do have brows already done. I figured I would spare you guys today just because the last video was so long. I don't know. So brows are already done. We're gonna start from shadow. And by this point, you guys may know, I'm gonna start with a P. Louise base. So I'm just gonna put a little bit. I normally don't use a, um, I should just finish my sentence. I normally don't use the base for like an everyday look, but this is gonna be a little bit on the heavier side for makeup. So I just wanna make sure shadow stays where it needs to be. And I'm laying this down with an M124. You guys know how I feel about the Morphe brushes. Again, I will link all that stuff for you guys in the description box below. So I just bring the P. Louise base up into my eyebrow concealer, which is the Benefit Highbrow. And um, they blend pretty seamlessly together, but now we have our base on. So from here, now Kim likes to use more of like a um, cool tone, neutral vibe. I have a couple reference photos that I'm just gonna go take a look at real quick. I think I'm gonna just lie down some bronzer. The makeup looks gonna be a little bit on the darker side anyway, so the bronzer will be fine. And I just wanna give us an even base to work with. So you guys can kind of see it, it darkened it up just a little bit. And just laying this little bit of a base is gonna help us blend out the colors. We're gonna use a little later. So on the cool tone side, I'm gonna be using my Morphe 18F palette. I used this one also in the last video for their plum color. The color I wanna use from the palette today is called Subtle. It's this like coolish, taupish, it's like a cool tone brown with some taupish vibes going on in there. I'm not sure how it's gonna build up on the eye. It's my first time using it, so we will try. I'm gonna take a little bit of a smaller blending brush. I'm gonna pick up the uh, JH33. Uh, it's one of Jaclyn Hill's brushes, also from Morphe. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that subtle color and hope for the best. I'm gonna blend out a few different layers. So I'm gonna build it up. I don't want it to be too dark in any one spot. All right, I'm already noticing that she looks like she does her shadow a little bit different than mine, obviously. Normally, I like to do the kind of um, outer third, but for this look, and what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm just gonna keep it above the crease and in the crease, and we're gonna sweep it kind of out that way. So I'm not gonna come in, in other words. I did a little bit already, but it's all right. And we're just gonna keep building this color up until we get it to where we need to be. But already a pretty big difference. I love that color. I'm also hoping I'm able to make it through this video. Um, I live in Florida on the West Coast and we have Hurricane Ida, Etta, I don't know, and it's hitting us as we speak. So, I mean, I could lose power at any moment, pretty much. And I'm just picking up, I said this in the last video, but it's just an elf fluffy brush. It's kind of what it looks like. I got this, I want to say at Target, 
And um, Elf doesn't name their brushes or anything, but it's like a round, fluffy brush, and it's one of my favorites to blend with. Okay, I think that's good for one eye. We'll start on the other side. I do want to deepen this up. I'm just grabbing an M506, another one of my little favorite blending brushes. And I have this BH Cosmetics Hanging in Hawaii palette. I'm not going to show it to you guys because it's gross, but I'll put a picture on the screen or something for you. There's a shade in here called Maui that's a cool tone brownish that looks like it's a shade darker than the one that we've been using. So I'm going to pick that up and see if we can deepen it a little. Still saying in like that cool tone family. Which is so funny, I do love cool tone browns, but anytime I do my makeup for whatever reason, everything is super duper warm. I think I need to branch out a little more because I'm liking how this is looking. Alrighty. I'm just gonna add a little bit of Mahalo from that same Hangin' in Hawaii palette from BH. I'm just gonna start to shape this a little bit. Like her shadow's not super blunt. It's blended really nicely, but they do some interesting shapes with the shadows on her eyes. So I'm trying to kind of get there too. We also have super differently shaped eyes, so there's only so close I'm gonna be able to get. But um, the next thing that we're gonna do is cut our crease. I'm gonna use the same brush that we used earlier, the M124. And speaking of interesting shapes, now, normally when I cut my crease, for example, guys, I bring it down and follow the shape of my eye like this. It looks like for Kim's to, I guess, give her a little bit more brightness. Instead of going down, they kind of stop like up here. I'm probably not explaining it right, so I'm just gonna do it and again, hope for the best. Anytime I'm cutting the crease, I always like to start um, not really close to the lash line because you can get built up of the um, base really easily there but I kind of like to start in the center of wherever I'm going to be cutting so that I can kind of just pat out the base and get it on there really evenly and it's not like clumped up in any one spot. Here's one eye. So normally, like I was mentioning, I kind of come down like on a little bit of a V. The way that she cuts her crease, or it appears to me anyway, is that it's a little bit more like up and boxy in this little corner. I've never cut it in that shape before, so for me it looks a little funky, but I think I'm just gonna trust the process, do the other eye, and then we'll come back for shadow and liner and all that good stuff. All right, both eyes, crease is cut. Not looking too bad. Again, trusting the process. I'm gonna pick up like a um, creamish color, creamish, off-whitish color. And we're gonna set that base. I'm just picking this up on a JH42, which has to be the tiniest little brush that I have. I'm starting out with a matte cream to kind of just lay over the crease that we just cut but I think I am gonna add a little bit of a shimmer. Okay, and one cool thing I saw one of her makeup artists do was, I don't know why I never thought to do this, he dipped into the same like matte creamish color, but then also in a shimmer so that there was just the lightest bit of glow. So I'm gonna pick up, pick up the same like cream color that we've been using, and it's just in a random Morphe palette. You guys can use whatever cream you have. And I'm gonna pick up a, Shimmer, also from the Hangin' in Hawaii palette, just because it's in my hand now. And they have a really pretty shimmer on here called Sandy. And it looks like it has some creamish undertones. So I'm gonna pick that up with the matte. And we'll see what it does. It's really pretty. Maybe not so much in camera, but definitely in person. Um, okay, so I'm doing matte, shimmer, and then back into the map. So it's almost like the little shimmer is kind of enclosed in between the matte shadows. But I like the way it's like peeking through. It's really pretty. Now that's about as much shadow as I want to put down. So we're just going to get to blending. I'm not focusing so much on the inner corner, mostly on the outer corner back this way. Just because I wasn't loving how 
the cut crease was looking. It's a little bit too sharpy sharp for me. I didn't put any um, additional product on this, by the way. It's this M506. I'm just using whatever residual was left on there and kind of moving around some of the shadow that we have and already laid down on our lids. Next, we are gonna do our eyeliner. For eyeliner, I'm gonna be using a combination, so don't laugh at me. But I have this voluminous liner. This one is by L'Oreal Paris. I love the felt tip on it, but the color just doesn't come out as black and dark as I need it to. So I'm also gonna be using um, this Wet n Wild Mega Liner in black. So I'm gonna take the felt tip and dip it in the pot. We're gonna just use this for its brush. And the goal for the liner is, do you guys see kind of where the taupe ends and all of that good stuff. I, I want it to come down this way, I think. But be have it be very thin to start. I was just taking a look at the reference photo. I don't know that they go all the way down to the center of the eye, so I'm gonna start from the, the middle. It is dumping on us outside right now. I went ahead and I did add one lash, no mascara yet. But I just, I'm using these um, lashes in a box. They're just like natural little wispy lashes. They're a little bit long, I'm just adding them in for some volume. You guys know I usually don't like to do lashes, but these are really don't mind. They feel like you almost have nothing on. So I'm just bending the lash. This is usually what I do to kind of get it curvy the way that I need it to be. And my favorite lash glue ever is this Kiss Strap Lash Adhesive with Aloe. I was using, I don't know what brand it was before, but it would make my eyes burn. Um, so whatever for whatever reason, the, the one with aloe does really, really well for me. It goes on white and then it turns like this fluorescent looking purple when it's like tacky enough to put on and then it just dries clear. Usually I will just go over it with a little bit of liner or some dark shadow to hide the lash line, but it's fine. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but it's like a little purpley. And I use the tweezers to kind of just place them as close to my water lash as humanly possible. They do have shorter lashes in the front that belong at the front of the eye and then longer lashes in the back. I usually will try to line up the lash almost to the end of my eye. When it's on there, I usually just like to take the tweezer and I'm not pinching my eye, but I'm almost like pulling the lash even closer down to my waterline. But be careful to not actually pinch your eye. The other thing I'll do is I'll grab the tip of the lash and just push up. Make sure that there are no pockets that are not sticking to the eye. I've done that too many times before. And I know some people like to do their mascara before they do the lashes. I'm definitely one of the people that likes to do it after. I don't know. I don't really have trouble putting on the lashes and getting them to stay without the mascara. So I do it that way. And I feel like when you use the mascara afterwards, it kind of blends your eyelashes into the faux lashes even better. The brand new mascara. This is so satisfying. Um, this is just a Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I do have a new one that I'm gonna try, but I don't wanna put on the channel until I can vouch for it. So I'm just gonna do a couple coats of mascara. And the goal here again is to kind of just bring my own lashes up into the strip lashes so that they um, look like they're one. I kind of wiggle my way through. I don't like the um, super clumpy brow look. It's not my, uh, it's not my steez. And then when you kind of get to the front part of your eye, where you may or may not have some of your inner corner lashes, I do like to just take the tip of the mascara and like lightly brush them up because the strip doesn't go on my entire eye. That just helps kind of get, make it look a little bit more cohesive. All right, we're gonna move on to the rest of our face before we finish our eyes. And for foundation, I'm just using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Um, this might be a little bit dark for me right now just because I've lost most of my tan. We're gonna work it. Shade of it is called Toffee Pecan. Um, and I like these. The It smells a little funky, I'm not gonna lie, but um, for five bucks, the foundation is great coverage and it comes with like a little spatula so I don't have to use my, um, my brush as much. You guys know I like to kind of do this funny painting your face thing to measure out my foundation and all that stuff, so 
Here we are. I always feel like my biggest challenge with makeup, tell me in the comments below if it's the same for you guys. I feel like I have eight different shades going on on my face and the only thing that I ever want to do with makeup for the most part is even out my skin tone. But between like the freckles, I have some like discoloration, got a lot of stuff going on. So it's kind of hard to find um, a foundation that's like a perfect match. So I usually just try and get close enough and work around it. I haven't used a real foundation in so long, y'all. I do like to kind of bring it down the neck, the behind the ear situation, and just blend that out. And again, slightly dark, but I think once we have our contour and our highlight and all that stuff on it, won't look too crazy. And I just use a flat brush to be careful around my eyebrows. This brush is falling apart. Clearly I need a new one. Make sure when you guys are blending out your forehead, stay very relaxed. The last thing you want to do is like kind of raise your eyebrows. And that's how you get product to kind of settle in the creases and areas where we don't want it to. For concealer, I'm going to be using the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. It's just the one with the little striped top. You'll see this at any CVS or Walmart or Target you guys go to. Um, Jackie Ina put me on, love her. And uh, I was looking for a little bit of a thicker um, concealer to put on top or under my eyes on top of when I do foundation and I'm in love with this one. A lot of people say that um, it's a really good dupe for like the uh, shape tape. I personally have never used shape tape so I really can't tell you but that's what all the kids are saying. Now when Kim kind of does her contour she has really bright under eyes. I almost wish I had like a brightener or something. She does that like conceal, bake, and brighten. I got the conceal and the bake part down packed, but um, hopefully we'll get there. The concealer does dry down pretty quickly, so I wouldn't um, recommend hitting multiple places on your face at once. I'm going to conceal like nose and maybe my chin a little bit, but um, I don't want it to dry down completely before I get the chance to like fully blend it out. From here, we're gonna hit it with some baking powder and we actually will bake today in honor of Kim K. I just have another like Morphe angled brush. I think you guys may have seen me use this before. Um, that I'm gonna pick up and dust underneath first. I just wanna make sure that there's not gonna be any creasing. And then I'll build it up and we'll let it bake after. I always like to hit it with the beauty blender just before I put powder to make sure again, no creasing, no build up, all that good stuff. We are in the oven now. I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit. I'm gonna just do the bridge of my nose. I don't like to let the um, translucent powder sit on my nose too much. I get like, I don't know, I feel like it's gonna seep all in there and not my face. From here, I'm gonna start building up some contour for our bronzer. So from that same, um, what is this, CoverGirl? Yes, from the same concealer line, I just have a darker shade that I pick up that I use for contour. And this is the shade D300 Bronze. You guys want to use this in the last one too. And I like to lay the cream base first and then we'll go on top with some powder. Now she kind of keeps her bronzer for the most part kind of concentrated back this way. So I'm gonna do the same. While we continue to bake, we're gonna go ahead and set that bronzer. I have the Maybelline New York City bronzer. This one's a little dark. So again, we're gonna kind of just concentrate it back here. And I'm using it on a Morphe E4 brush. This is my favorite bronzer brush ever. It's angled, but also not too huge. So it's good for like precision contour work like we're doing. We're gonna switch brushes and also switch bronzers. I'm gonna tap into my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and picking up that with an M527. So this is the larger, fluffier one. I kind of just want to diffuse and like layer this out. We're gonna cut that too, don't worry. 
I'm gonna pick up my cosmetic sponge and some of that Laura Mercier powder. And we are just going to cut again. I'm gonna go from the top of my ear. I said this in the last video, I don't normally bring it all the way down. Kim literally brings it down to the corner of her mouth. We're just gonna trust the process, guys. Okay, should look like that. I'm going to wipe off the under eye one. And I'm just picking up a smaller little, this is another No Name Morphe brush, just a little small fluffy one to kind of just brush out the rest. I like to take the residual and kind of just set the rest of the face. <laughs> Literally all over the place. Okay. Next, we will go ahead and contour our nose. I'm gonna pick up the M572 and I'm just gonna pick up the Physician's Formula one. I don't want the nose contour to be too, too, too dark, though hers, Kim's is very prominent. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys up close. Do you see kind of like the line of the shadow here? We're gonna bring the bronzer up to kind of meet it right there so it kind of blends super nicely. The thing that I like about the butter bronzer is you can definitely build it up if you need to. I like to start off light, just to start. Now, your nose contour might not be the same as mine. I should mention your con the nose contour specifically is gonna be specific to what type of shape you're trying to accomplish. I actually kinda like my nose. Not that I kinda like, I like my nose. And so usually I kinda just try to bring the front of my face together and adding a little bit of that um, contour down it. But some people like to go for that really like pinched look. So you might put your bronzer a little bit closer together up here at the bridge of your nose. Or like, I know to Sierra, the singer, she likes to do like a little bit of contour here because she likes it, that little button nose look. Neither of those are my fave or for me in my nose. So this is kind of what I do. But I recommend when you guys are doing your makeup, figure out kind of what shapes you want to go for, what you guys like. I just picked up an M173. This is just a round brush. This is similar to the e.l.f. one that I use, except more dense. So it's kind of good to just blend out some of the harsh lines here that we just created with that other flat brush while still keeping our shape. So you can kind of see it goes up into the shadow. And to connect it even more, I'm gonna pick up our little M506 from earlier. And now that we have our base on, you can kind of blend that even better. All right, I'm gonna take that random fluffy brush and we're just gonna wipe off the rest of our bake. Now that our bake is kind of all gone, we're not done with our face just yet, but I do wanna wrap up my eyes. So I just picked up a JH43. This is like a little flat head brush. This is what I'm gonna to use to pick up some shadow for our waterline or under our eye. And I'm just gonna pick up that darker Maui color. I like the little flat edge brush for this because Kim doesn't do too much of a prominent, prominent under eye. So I wanna blend it out, but I wanna keep it pretty tight line. And you guys know normally when I do my own makeup, I usually like to smoke that out. Kim likes to keep her liner pretty sharp here, so I'm only doing the shadow until the corner of my eye or the end of my eye here. See, so it gives us a little bit of depth, but not anything crazy. And we're gonna grab our mascara, just run that through our bottom lashes. From what I can tell, she likes really prominent bottom lashes. So I'm going a little bit heavier handed than what I normally would, but it's really pretty. Might have overdone this one a little. The last step I would say for you guys, if you guys were replicating this at home, definitely go with like a nudish color in your waterline of an eyeliner. To be honest, I can't find mine anywhere and I'm not about to go to the store and buy one, it's way too late, um, but I do wish I had it. Next up is gonna be blush. This is the part that I get so nervous for. I would say, out of all of the makeup steps, I'm least confident in the blush, but I'm gonna try so hard to make this good for you guys. Usually, I just go in with one color. I love, love, love the blush placement. I'll put a couple pictures of like how Kylie does it, where it's like that bright pink, it's like at the perfect part of the apple of your cheek. Dude, I don't know. I've tried so many times to like get it good. And what I think they actually do is start off with like, a lighter peachier blush and they blend that it looks like they blend it into the contour and then just on the apples of the cheeks they kind of focus that like brighter pinky color um, but I think it looks super pretty super youthful super soft glam um, so I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for the best to lay the first layer I'm just gonna use the pearlescent pink wet and wild blush that I used in the last one 
So I'm gonna pick up some of that on this random unicorn brush. I don't know where this is from, maybe Amazon or something. And I'm gonna kind of just lightly build that up in here. Let's see what else I have for blush. I have this really cool um, blush palette from BH Cosmetics. You guys haven't shopped them before. They're mostly online. A couple stores carry them, like uh, someone I went to recently, Kohl's I think has their stuff. Um, but they're super cheap and really, really good quality. Some of my favorite palettes are from them. So I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of like their brightish pinkish color and see what this does. If you guys are good at blush, tell me in the comments what am I doing wrong because help. I honestly think that this is this might be as good as the blush is gonna get. I don't hate it, but I do wanna drag some of that blush just at the tip of the nose. I think Kylie does this pretty often and I think it's kinda cute. Next up will be highlights. I think they go mostly for like a pretty subtle highlight. Yeah, so I'll use my um, my go-to, my Wet n Wild Hustle and Glow. I'm gonna pick up a little bit just from the cap with the M451. Tap that off, lightly blend it in. I think I'm gonna just take the residual and run it down. I do like to take that same brush that I wiped away all of the bake with to kind of just blend the full face. You want to blend the highlighter into the blush and that blush into the bronzer. We got one cohesive look going on over here. Last but certainly not least is our lips. And for this I am going to be using KKW Beauty's Lip Liner. I do have to say you guys really, really like it. This one is a little bit dark. It's the shade Nude 3. I think I wanted like a, I don't know, Nude 2 or 2.5 two if I remember. Should I bring one more out here with me? No, just this one. Um, anyway, now they A, have their lips done and B, also overline. I'm not the greatest with overlining, but I am gonna try. And bottom lip is decently bigger than my top lip, so I usually won't overline that. Do what's best for you and your lip shape and live your best life. I know it looks like I'm making a little bit of a mess. I just wanna get the liner on because I'm gonna use another one of her lipsticks, also Nude 3, um, in the center. So kinda of give it a little bit of that ombre lip that they love to do. Her lip liners are perfect for something like this because they blend out like a dream. And I usually just put enough on there so that I can like move it around the majority of my lip. Put the lip liner down. I do love this though, it's a really pretty brown. And again, I'm just gonna take her KKW lipstick. I don't know if this is like a satin or, oh, it's a cream. It's one of her cream lipsticks. Love the containers um, for them. I love the clear. Great to hold in the hand and also super duper creamy. So I'll probably be picking up a few more of these. You can see it's very light. I feel like the lip liner made this a little dark. I'm gonna go grab like a, I think like a little bit of like a warmer color, like a um, gloss to put on top. So I do feel like most of their lips are not so much on the cool side, they're a little bit more on the warm side, so. I kind of kept the lip liner, or tried to. And I just picked up this, um, I love Milani lipsticks also, and I have one in Matte Beauty that seems to be that like brownish tone, like warmish tone that she uses. So we're gonna try this. I do have to say the Milani lipsticks feel super similar on the lips to the KKW ones. Don't know if that's a good or a bad thing considering KKWs are double the cost. I'm gonna grab her lipstick again and just lighten this up. But I think this is like more of the brownish undertones that she likes. The other thing I have is this um, Milani like gloss. It's called Amori Shine and it's in the color Number two, tenderness. They tend to be a little thick, so I'm just gonna go light-handed over that. To seal it all in, we're gonna finish also with Milani's Make It Last Matte Finishing Spray. Oh, yeah. All right, obviously I had to go and take my hair down, but this is the final look. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let me make a serious face so you can see. Kim K or nah. I'm super happy with how the look came out. I feel like for my first time ever trying, 
the tones, the colors, I think they're definitely on par. Do have to work at the blush, like I mentioned. But again, practice makes perfect, so I don't mind. I do, I am really, really happy that I switched over the lip color because this is way more close to what she normally wears. And it's funny because this is definitely like the same combination that I do on a normal basis myself. So that's not too far off. The rest of the look is definitely way more makeup than I would ever wear on a normal basis. But for the purpose of the video and creating this soft glam look for you guys, I think it's absolutely perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed this Kardashian inspired soft glam look. Let me know in the comment section below how you think I did and if there's any other makeup looks that you guys are interested in seeing. As always, like this video, subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next one.